This is IBM Museum. Today I'll be showing how to add memory to the IBM PC convertible. That's model number 5140. This system came out in April of 1986, exactly a year ahead of the initial release of the IBM PS2 series. And as you'll see, the styling was preserved over to the IBM PS2s, as well as the features of this unit were carried over to the low-end models of the PS2s. Within the boxes of memory upgrade, IBM included this little booklet that shows the use of a coin to go through and release the catches for the battery compartment at the rear of the unit and unplug the battery power and also unplugging system power. Now I don't have a functional battery in my unit and I have actually the power switched off to the wall transformer right now. So we're ready to continue without any power being supplied to the unit as we go through and add memory. They show a, a, the use of a coin on the open unit to access the compartment. But let's go through and open up the unit, pushing the catches on either side, bringing the display up. And it actually elevates the rear of the keyboard slightly, so if this is flat on a desk, it's in a, a good typing ele uh, angle for someone. And they're showing using the coin in either side of these slots. And I have seen, seen the ridges here on the side of the coin. I believe this is a dime that they're representing. A penny works well, a nickel or quarter is simply too thick to be functional, but a, a dime is perfect. And you hear the little click as the dime works in on either side and and releases that tray, that, that keyboard. Okay, they show bringing the keyboard up. And normally this is on a cable, so it would prevent getting this out of the way to be able to add memory modules. But as the booklet shows, there is a, the, the keyboard just simply is able to latch into position there to be out of the way. And they show two memory modules installed, just like my system has here. Initially, IBM only released the 128 KB memory card okay and so there was a false belief that as people went through and got more of the 128 KB cards to their their system that they thought that the, the maximum memory capacity of the system was 512 KB. Go through and latch those down. Be careful because those, those latches can be brittle with age. I actually have to repair this one after prepping for this video the other day and it, it broke off with me going through and working with the unit. And as you see, there's no further room in this area for uh, a, another memory module to be stacked in. But there were some hobbyists that came up with a, a ribbon cable that made it so you could, you could have a fifth module down here and have the maximum, the true maximum capacity of the system is 640 KB. Okay. Now within several months, a company called STB released the CRAM 384. And this is the third party memory upgrade. And as you see, it doesn't have a, a stacking connector. So this would be on the end of the chain, but would be here and that would allow the system to also reach that maximum memory capacity 
of 640 KB. Now later on IBM did release the 256 kilobyte module. And the interesting thing about these modules is all the chips and then the marking on the card itself has the logo for Seiko Epson Japan. And I'm going to probe at the connection between Seiko Epson and IBM in a later video because there are other chips including with the MOL25 and MOL30 of the PS2s that have a, a, a Seiko Epson chipset in the in the system that's that's all the the chips are identified as and it, it doesn't even look like IBM designed those systems now in this case I'm going to go through and in this last position I'll go through and replace this 128 KB module I say those tabs are very brittle, so be careful. Okay. Wow. Okay. Get that out of there, and I'll put the. 256 KB IBM module in there. And the order that these go in doesn't matter for the IBM modules. I'm actually even coming up with a pinout of those of these modules just to further document them. Okay. So we have The memory module's in place. We're going to bring down the keyboard again, latch it in the back, and as it presses down you can hear its seat. We're going to switch on power for the power supply of this unit and go ahead and power it on. The system goes through and we'll count to 640 KB. I realize the screen is very hard to see that there's just that scan that the camera doesn't pick up very well on. Counts to 640 KB and it accesses the tries to access the diskette in the drive. This unit doesn't have any hard drive to it and you see the square analog clock animation saying that the time and date is not set on this system. And that is also the same as on the last BIOS of the, the PS2 Mall 30. There's further animation showing to insert the start diskette in the drive and press the F1 key. In my startup diskette, it's more likely that the drive is broken and that late in a later video I'll show replacing those drives with, with functional units and, and getting that so we can see the what the startup diskette covers. Uh, in this case when I put in the diskette it actually shows it coming back out of the drive and it shows it breaking into pieces in the animation. It's uh, quite elaborate in this case. But I'm just going to simply press the F1 key here. Tries to access the floppy drive again and then it has dropped us into ROM basic. With, without being able to start up from uh, any of the diskette drives. So we've gone through and we've added memory to the PC convertible. That's all I have for today. Please like and subscribe to this video and my channel. They, there will be uh, further videos coming along. But that's all I have for today. This is IBM Museum. Thank you.